In the golf world, there have been strides made to make the sport we all love more open and available to minority communities, but the job is far from over. Doing her part to bridge the gap is LPGA veteran Mariah Stackhouse, who, on top of competing against the world's best players, has taken action to grow the game and inspire the next generation of athletes. Integrity to me is just having honesty uh, in the actions in and around the passions and missions that you hold most dear. I didn't come from a family that was out of a country club or a family members that played competitive golf. So it was definitely new to my parents. I was absolutely aware that there was very little representation of our race um, in, in the sport. It, it was hard not to uh, see that. Golf was usually uh, a sport for the wealthy, and we definitely were not wealthy. You know, her father is from Myrtle Beach. He grew up not able to play golf in one of the biggest golfing uh, communities, but worked on golf courses, and he and his brothers had a love for the game. What the golf space looked like as a whole, I don't think I started to become conscious of that until my maybe preteen, uh, early teen years. You know, I think the times that it would hit me most would be, you know, pictures from tournaments of my friends, you know, and then I think those would be the moments where I realized I might have been the only black golfer there. Good one at that, so advantage Stanford. One of the best places golf has taken me was definitely my four years at Stanford. It continues to open doors for me, and I'm so thankful to golf for kind of leading me there and, and providing me that opportunity. That's another one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about youth and, and, and young girls, especially getting into the game, becoming competitive and, 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 and honing that potential because you get a free ride into a great university. And I think there are women's golf scholarships out there still that are unclaimed um, because there aren't enough girls to fill those spots. And so there's a lot of opportunity out there. I'll continue to do everything in my power to just kind of grow the game and, and, and do what I can to help young girls not just get interested, but stay interested. I think I'm most proud of the person that Mariah has become. You know, as your child, you, you hope they become a good person, a nice person, get along well with people, um, have the full range of experiences in life, um, be involved in the community, and, and she's done that. So I'm, I'm very proud of the person that she's become. Girls very often are in shells, their little um, insulated areas are confinement. So to help them come out of that and grow as people, I think it's wonderful to see that. I'll definitely see more black faces than I did growing up. There definitely stands to be more. You know, I'd love to not notice it one day, right? And that means that we've truly gotten to where we see around us in whatever city we're in is reflected on the golf course. Seeing something like, this is what I can achieve, this is someone who I can sort of embody and be, is I think it's really good just to know like what you can aim for. What I want to do when I get older is definitely play on the LPGA tour, go to Stanford as well. Like, <laughs> everything that Mariah Stackhouse has done basically is on my list. <laughs> Change requires resources. And so if I can direct the resources at my disposal um, towards the initiatives that I'm passionate about, then I'll actually be able to affect change. I think there's no doubt that introducing more young girls to the game of golf instills in them a sense of empowerment. No matter what the outcome is, if you step onto the tee and you're ready to do that and you feel able, then there's a sense of empowerment that comes from that. And I think golf's incredible in that way. I believe that if you act with intention and put your best self forward every day and whatever those missions might be, then you'll find that the decisions and action that you take will most always be valuable.
Mariah Stackhouse joins us now. I saw a nice little smile creep across your face as you're watching this piece. These girls so inspired by you, and you have been such an inspiration to so many of these girls. Why has it been so important to you to try and increase the diversity in the game of golf? You know, I, I, I think for the simple reason that golf has given me so much, and it's been an incredible part of my life, my journey, and I feel so grateful for the experiences that I've had um, throughout my uh, process of, of journeying from junior golf to college golf to professional golf. And I think that I would love to help as many kids as possible have those same opportunities that I did and just get to experience uh, the life that golf can bring you. Next Monday marks the third annual Renee Powell uh, Clearview Legacy Benefit, and this is yes. an amazing fundraiser. brings attention to not just what Renee Powell is doing at Clearview, but also benefits her foundation. But your foundation has also been a founding partner in this as well. Can you just describe what sort of impact that Renee Powell has been able to have on this game? Oh, I mean, when you think about what a pioneer is in a space, Renee Powell is definitely that. And I remember being little and my parents wanting to make sure that I knew about the people that had paved the way for me um, to, to be in this space and, and be able to move through it as peacefully as I do. And so she was one of those people um, that I learned about growing up. And I've just admired her, her, uh, her tenacity, her love for the game and her continued commitment uh, well into retirement from um, the life of a professional golfer. And she's still teaching, she's still giving back, she's still running her father's course. I mean, that is uh, a life uh, a life dedicated to the game that she loves and it's inspirational to me. Well, I loved watching you in 2015 NCAA championship be a huge part of why the Stanford Cardinal won the national championship. You know, that was a few years ago and you, I think your dad said he loves the person that you've become uh, since, you know, being a child. What advice would you give young, or what advice do you give young girls uh, that are out, you know, in college and want to play professional golf or collegiate golf? Yeah, um, there's so many pieces of advice to give, but I think, you know, when I give advice about that, I try to think about what would college me have needed to know to be even more prepared. Um, and I think it's as simple as working on tightening up the areas of your game, but. I think the difference between college, college golf and professional golf is that it requires so much more course management and just really getting out and knowing a course from the front to the back of the green. Because it's like all of a sudden, you're playing courses that are always a really high caliber, and so there's no time to sleep when you're on tour. And so you gotta be ready. Well, talking, you know, that was a perfect segue to my next question, because it sounds like you have played here quite a bit at Veltastral, and uh, it isn't a course that you sleep on. With the practice rounds that you have had, uh, what about this course do you like that suits your game? I'm, I consider myself a really solid ball striker off the tee, and I think that's going to be huge here this week is being in the fairway. The rough's tight, and the greens are really firm, and they run out. So you really want to be approaching the green from the fairway out here to have a good time um, and have some opportunities for birdie. And, uh, and then I've been putting in a lot of work on the lag putting, and I think that's also going to be a huge factor here. So I think those two things, um, and just being able to get it inside about a five-foot proximi proximity uh, on the chip shots, the person, the person who does those three things is the person that's going to have a great week. So basically the entire game needs to be, needs to be hot from top to bottom. major championship should be, right? Oh, that's awesome. We're definitely polling for you. Thank you. This is the first time we're getting to see a Baltus Roll uh, host the KPMG Women's PGA Championship. And we see some incredible venues that this major has gone to in recent years. Can you compare it to any of the ones that we've seen over the last few years? You know, I think uh, a couple of the girls and I were talking about it. I think in terms of just the length and the demand, it reminds us a little bit of Congressional last year. Um, but it's got its own character for sure. And uh, it doesn't play quite like the last few. And I think it's going to be demanding in different ways. Um, you definitely need some length here, but there's also some opportunities, a few shorter holes to take advantage of. Um, so yeah, it's just about firing off at the right time out here. <laughs> All around major tests, just yes. what we want for the KPMG <laughs> Women's PGA Championship. Mariah, thank you for spending some time with us on this important day and during what is no doubt a busy week for you, getting ready for a major. Great to see you as always. Yeah, thank you for having me. Happy Juneteenth. <laughs>